looking at how to be a great father how to be a great father there are many men and there are many men that have given birth to children but there are few fathers god is looking for fathers but the best of all the fathers that we have we all want to emulate is our heavenly father god is our father because he's our father we can be fathers and he says here, a son honors his father. A son honors his father. And a servant his master. If then I am your father, where is my honor? So the first honor we give is not even to ourselves. The first honor we give is to our God. If I am your father, where is my honor? And this God, we don't honor him on a Father's Day. We honor him every day. We honor him with what we do. We honor him with our worship. We honor him with our service. We honor him with, our, with the lips. I mean, the, the praise of our lips. Amen? He said, if I be your father, where is my honor? If I am your master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts to your priests who despise my name. I pray to God that in our lifetime, we, everything we do will gear to us showing honor and appreciation to our God. Forever, I am indebted to this God. Amen? At a time, I didn't know where my life was going. At a time, my biological father, who was my hero, I saw him reduced to nothing. And there I said to myself, this man has an end. But my God has no end. Let me turn to this God. See what he has made out of my life. And see where he's taking me. I believe I'm on a journey with God. And everyone must make God your source. Your provider. Your protector. Your supplier. And your everything. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Alright. So the first person we want to honor is God. Once you honor God, everything is intact. There are so many men with children, but a few fathers. God is calling on real fathers who will raise godly families in this end time. The base of every society is the family. The head of every family is the father. Now, can I say something to you? Some of you who are Americanized, you will not understand some of these things. But I will teach you Bible today. America has reduced men to nothing. And in this era of women revolution, equality, and all that, it's unscriptural. Now hear me hear this. When we talk about women being equal with man, there's nothing wrong with that. When it comes to what a man can achieve, a woman can achieve too, and all these things, I don't think that is we, anybody is arguing against that because God has blessed everybody with giftings, with resources. If you apply them, you will achieve anything you want to achieve. But when we get to a place where, ladies and gentlemen, we want to twist God's order of how things must be. And because of this teaching, and the things that we do. So that now, there are things that when you say, is politically incorrect in America. And so it has reduced the place of man and what man must, is supposed to be in our society. And are we wondering why society is being torn apart? Listen to me. In God's order, the man is supposed to be the head of the family. Give him that respect. Make him feel so. 
honor him that way and then the blessing that we are looking for as a society will begin to happen when a man feels disrespected even by society because the laws in a in in a country project and uh, protect the interests of women which there's nothing wrong with that because they are the weaker vessel and unfortunately when men don't live right for god they take advantage and abuse women so the laws have been projected to protect the women i don't have anything against that but unfortunately it has been extended to a point where now the honor the respect that men ought to have is being taken away from our society so we have women that are raising men that's not the role of a, a woman men are supposed to raise men and so when we have absentee fathers that's why we are raising boys that are looking like women <laughs> acting like women Amen. crying like women listen i have taken my time and i've thought and think way back from the beijing conference when they went to Beijing and had a conference and agreed that equality is the way, society began to change. Today I know I will touch some nerves. I may get some emails, but I will teach you Bible. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Men must rise up and be men. Amen. Don't shake your responsibility. Don't let women raise your children. Be a man. Be in the house. Mentor your sons. Mentor your daughters. Talk to them. Teach them. Raise them. Are you hearing me? It is not the responsibility of the woman to raise your son for you. Don't be an absentee father. Don't be a father who is not involved in your children. Don't be a father who don't care about your children. It's not enough to provide. It's not enough to pay the bills. It is not enough to buy dresses for them. Get involved in their day-to-day activity. Find out what is going on in their lives. Sit down and have conversation with your children. Listen to me. I kid you not. And God knows my heart. Nothing means anything to me except my children. My biggest legacy I can live on this earth is my children. And I pray to God that God will guide and govern and, and open their ears to hear what I tell them and what I teach them. Because at the end of the day, Everything else will mean nothing. But the legacy you leave with your children and what they become, it's what will speak forever after you. Say, Father, help me to be a godly father to my children. Amen? What is the meaning of a father? Both in the Greek and in the Hebrew word, it means a source, a protector, a provider, a nourisher, and a founder. A father is a founder. A father is a nourisher. A father is a provider, a protector, and a source. The source of every child is the seed. That a man gives. So you are the source of life. It started from you. Are you hearing me? Your children started from you. You gave it. So a father is a source. A father is a protector. You must protect your children. Spiritually, physically. There are things that are after 
our children. There is a spirit in America that is looking for children. You must know, you must see it and fight it. Fight it in your knee, on your knees. Fight it with prayer. Fight it with the word of God. Fight it physically. Anything that tries to come after your children. Ladies and gentlemen, as a father, you must fight it. Because you are a protector. You are a watchman. You are supposed to be the defender of your family. You are supposed to be the defender of your children. You are supposed to be the defender of your wife. That's what a father does. Amen? So, what are the things that makes you a great father? If you are going to be a great father, then you must be a great provider. You must be what? Yeah. And you can't be a great provider if you are a lazy father. You must work hard. Hey, can I say something to you all the men here? Hard work doesn't kill nobody. Hard work, hard work doesn't kill nobody. Crack your brains and work hard. Amen? Listen, it's appointed unto man once to die after their judgment. Give your children the best they can. You must be a good provider. Provide them with the best of life. Amen? Provide them with the best of education. Provide them with the best of a living condition. You can do it. Say, I can do it. Can do it. Amen? Amen? So if you are going to be a great father, you must be a great provider. Provide them with the best of life. Listen to me. Long time ago, I said to myself, I said, I pray to God that none of my children will ever get to a point and blame God. That because my father served God, so he couldn't provide us the best of things of life. So I purpose in my heart, I will work hard. Amen? I'm not an expert in English, but I said I'll write book. Huh? No, I'll write with my English. I'll give it to the expert. Edit it for me. If it means paying you, I'll pay you. If I don't find no one who, I have people who by the grace of God won't charge me. Will prove, read my English for me. I'll publish my book as I'm talking to you. There are two books that are ready right now. Hard work doesn't kill nobody. If you are going to be a good provider, you must be a hard worker. Amen? Where are the men in the house? Stand on your feet. Every man stand. Say, Father, give me grace to work hard so I can provide the best, the best to my children. Yeah. God bless you. Please take your seat. You must be a good and a great provider. Provide money for the house. Listen. Can I say something to you? It is not biblical to be doing 50-50 with your wife. You want God to bless you? Change your mind and stop this American thing. If you are in Africa, some of you who are from Africa, are you going to be doing fit every day with your wife? Oh, by, by family standard, you are useless man. if you do that. Okay, you bring 50. Me too, I bring 50. You will pay the light. I will pay this. Where? 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 Where in Africa? You will hear that. The delegation will come and collect their daughter. Sleep with yourself. <laughs> Eat your own food. Do your own thing and do 50-50. How come now we have come to America and suddenly you want to do 50-50? From where? Who taught you that? A man is supposed to be a provider. You provide for the family. You take care of your family. <laughs> Women, if you don't take me to lunch today, Are you hearing me? Listen, God will bless you if it's in your heart. Listen to me. We are not talking about women being irresponsible. That's not what we are talking about here. Okay? Because I'm telling you, every woman that loves the husband, whatever is her own, is for the husband anyway. 
Amen. Amen. But once you put paper down, you do 50-50. You pay this, pay this, pay this, I pay this. Where is that from? Where is that from? I wasn't raised up that way. I wasn't taught that way. I never read that in the Bible. Whatever I don't see in the Bible, I don't do. Whatever I don't see in the Bible, I don't do. And when you take that role as a responsibility, God gave it to you. God didn't make a mistake by giving birth to you as a man and bringing you into this world. He knows that it takes a lot to be a man. And he has graced you, has given the anointing, the power to be a man and to be a father. And so once he has graced you, you have what it takes to provide for your family. Shout and receive it. A great father is a great provider. Number two, you must be a great and a good protector. Protect your children and protect your wife. Protect your children. Protect your wife. Have you ever seen a security guard before? He's on guard when he's on duty 24-7. When you put them on duty and they are opposed, they are alert. They are vigilant. They are making sure that no intruder, no thief, nobody gets in. As a good protector, you must protect your children. Watch what they watch. Yes. If I'm paying your phone bill, I have access to your phone. I need to see who you are talking to. Who are you texting? Who are you WhatsApping? Are you understand what I'm saying? Don't sit down and give me American nonsense. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, they tell you, well, it's in America. They can do whatever they do. It's like a snake. They use one part to tell you, do all you want to do. Then the same snake will turn and bite you. No so. Look at what your Bible tells you how to raise your children and raise your children. Don't listen to Obama. Don't listen to uh, Hillary. Don't listen to Donald Trump. Don't listen to those guys. Listen to what the Bible tells you how to raise your children. Amen. Amen. I am paying rent. And you are bringing your boyfriend to my house. You are crazy. You, you, boyfriend, girlfriend, okay. First of all, I want to know all your friends anyway. If you are going, I want to check them first. And then you go. You have a time, you come back. If you are coming to my house, no problem. But when you come, you dance to our tune. There are some things we don't do in our house. There are some shows we don't watch in our house. There are some channels we don't see in our house. If you come and you behave in a certain kind of way, you leave, you are not coming back again because you, my daughter, my son, I'm telling you, he is not qualified to be your friend no more. Period. I am a protector. I must protect my children. Well, it doesn't work that way in America. It will work for me in America. Because if I don't do that very soon, I will have to come and visit you in jail. May God forbid that. If I don't do that very soon, the places I don't want to go, the same system has created it. That you come and visit them. That you take them there. Then they start making money off from you. Can I say something to you? The word of God is never wrong. And we can never be wiser than God's word. So you read the word, what the Bible teaches us. I don't care what century we are. The Bible is never irrelevant in any century. Today, the foolishness and the confusion of America here is this. They made everybody wise with their godly principles. And now they are abandoning their godly principles. And other people are using it now. And they are flourishing. And they are laughing at America. The Arab nations... The Chinese, you, you think we have the best airports in, in the world? Go to the Arab nations and see their airports. Go and look at their infrastructure. They came here and understudied America and went and improved on it. 
they are improving on it. Yeah. And now America, you know, that these are some of the things Obama said that the people didn't get. Let's reinvest it back in our infrastructure because our infrastructure, some of them are 100 years old. Some of them are 50, 60 years old. Go to Dubai right now. Go and see what they are building there with modern technology. America. Now we sit here and we are debating. Even when we know that something is wrong, for political expediency, we can't say it. Are you hearing me? So you can, if you're a good father, my friend, protect your house. Protect your house. Protect your house. Tell somebody, protect your house. Protect your house. Watch what your children are watching. Amen? Watch what they are watching. Who are they talking to? Amen? There are some of them, if they are Facebook, go to their Facebook account. Who are you chatting to? Have access to everything. If I can't have access to it, then you are not qualified to be on it. You are out. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, a father must be a great source. A source of wisdom. A source of knowledge. A source of godly counsel. A source of godly information. Listen to me. Sometimes it amazes me. The things my children know that I don't know. Am I the only one? Even when I think I'm watching, they know things I don't know. So, I, where did you know that? Oh, Daddy, are you the only one here? Oh, it's all over. Really? <laughs> when they go to school, do you go with them? No. The things they tell them that, do, are, you, are you in a class? No, no. Amen. Number four, a father, a great father must be a lovely, a, a lovely, a loving, Discipline, um, lovingly discipline their children when they do wrong and commend them when they do right. A great father is the one that disciplines their children when they go wrong and commend them when they do right. Now here's what we Africans do. We are quick to condemn and discipline, but when they do well, we don't celebrate them. And here is what we, the Americans, also do. We are quick to commend. Oh, you are great. Yeah. But when we do wrong, we don't discipline. Oh, yeah. There must be a balance. Yeah. Tell someone there must be a balance. Must be a balance. There must be what? A balance. When your children get their good grade, organize a party for them. Yes. Yes. Invite their friends to come home yes. and make noise about it. Yes. Okay? Well... That's what I expected from you. And then you said, well, me when, when I was in secondary school, I made this, I made this, and you, listen, celebrate them. Yes. Celebrate them when they make honor and uh, honor roll. They make A and B. They make all A. Honor them. Appreciate them. Take them out. Celebrate them. Yes. So that when they make a mistake, and you are reprimanding them, you are disciplining them, they know that daddy or mommy is doing this thing out of love. Right. It yeah. is not out of spite. It's not out of hatred. Are you hearing me? Right. Listen, my children knows I love them. But me, when you misbehave, the rod is not far away. I will whip you. That's how my father disciplined me. What I was taught is what I do. Amen? I will whip you. Listen, I see it in my, my Bible. They say, spare the rod. Yeah. yeah. It's Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You misbehave. I will beat you. I will beat the foolishness out of you. That devil must flee and leave you. Yeah. Since I gave that to my children, I never taught them. Good luck. That's your method. But me, the way I was raised. And when I see in the Bible, I will use it. Amen? I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about whipping you and when we finish you talk. Do you know why I beat you now? Yeah. And I explained to you that God loves you and I care about you. And this is part of what will make you great. 
And so if you repeat this, I will beat you again. Until that devil leaves you. Somebody shout amen. amen. So let's commend our children when they make all the great. And please don't promise your children if you get a grade, I will, I will, I will buy you this. And when they get a grade, you don't do it. That's not right. Amen. When you make a deal with your children, fulfill it. Don't do promise and fail. Don't say that if you do this and you get this, I will get you that. I mean, my children, they will whine and whine and whine until you do it anyway. Hallelujah. Number five, to be a great father, you must be an inspiration to your family. Welcome back. I trust that you were blessed by today's word. If you listened to today's word and you are not saved, I would like you to pray the simple prayer with me. I'd like you to invite Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Please save me, forgive me all my sin, and I pledge my life to live for you the rest of my days. Amen. If you pray that prayer sincerely, I want you to call me or write to me, and I know that your life is never the same. Love you, and I'm praying for you. Be blessed. If you would like to see this message in its entirety, please visit our website at www.gracefamilyint.com. If you're in the metro Atlanta area and would like to come and worship with us, please feel free to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. We are located at 742 Weiner Industrial Way, Sweet G, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 30046. Or just give us a call. Choir, are you there? Hello, my friend. This is Pastor Crepe here. I want to use this wonderful opportunity to invite you to our Prophetic Praise Conference 2016 with Sonny Badu. Sonny Badu is coming to Grace Family. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. Make my life so beautiful. excited and I'm looking forward to that and I want to use this wonderful opportunity to invite you to come and be part of this glorious conference. It is starting on Thursday the 30th of June through to Sunday the 3rd of July. Every night 7 p.m. on Sunday we're doing it at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. on that same day. It's going to be epic, it's going to be glorious, it's going to be very powerful and I'm looking forward to seeing you and your family. See you there. Be blessed.